people always have talked about world peace, right? Like, oh, what all all the Miss Universes, what do they say they want? What's one thing you could do for the world? Like world peace. Obviously, I mean, it's a utopic thing. We'll never get there, but it seems like the one practical engineering solution we can't implement is just make coercion, compulsion, violence less profitable and therefore less prevalent. Uh, I don't, I can't think of anything else we can do about that. So Bitcoin is a radical step in that direction. And we've had other steps in that direction, right? You mentioned the constitution, the ideals of life, liberty, property. Uh, you could argue, you know, democracy to some extent, liberal democracy has, has contributed as a step in that direction. Although there's arguments for and against, but, um, (laughs) It's yeah, it's very fascinating to look at it through that lens. So this is a theme that has come up for you in a lot of your interviews that which is segues nicely from this point, that we have less in common now with the future than we do with the past due to this radical technological advancement. Can you expand upon that? Because that's a strange thought for people, right? It's it's very easy to just look out on the world and be like, oh, this is the way things are. And most people do sort of take the status quo for granted, thinking this is the way things are, this is the way things will continue to be. But if you actually study history, it's anything but that. Like we do have long periods where things can be somewhat the same, but then there are these punctuated equilibrium or equilibria of radical change, right? In short amounts of time and almost always related to, te- to technology. So how do you describe that for people? Like the idea of having less in common with the future than we do with the past. No. Well, like I said before, I've always loved history and I've always enjoyed thinking about like, wow, this person was born, you know, the year this person was born, this person lived at the same time. You know, I've always found studying those timelines interesting when I was little and I never Mm -hmm. could put my finger on why. And not the moment, but a major moment for me, I've not told this story online, I don't think before, but I was in Israel last December and uh, I, I was at the Sea of Galilee, actually. And I just I just was sitting and looking over the sea, because, you know, obviously the Sea of Galilee, Jesus lived there for three years. That's that's documented historically. Capernaum um, is there. You know, that's where Jesus walked in water, um, if you, you know, believe the New Testament and everything. And so I, I was just sitting there enjoying that moment and, and enjoying the evening. And, you know, there are all these city lights around around the, the sea there. And it occurred to me, finally, why... I found history so fascinating and comparing those timelines. It, it's because the Sea of Galilee has had more, has had a larger visual change in its appearance in the last hundred years than the hundred years before that. Because a hundred years ago, there weren't light bulbs. But a hundred mm. years before that, there, were, there wasn't nearly as metal settlement. There wasn't nearly as much settlement then as there was a hundred mm. years later from then, or aka a hundred years ago from now. And I just thought back and back and I was like, oh, well, it's so obvious. It's so obvious that if you go from the time of Jesus to the time of today, you know, the last 2000 years or so, the visual appearance of the Sea of Galilee has changed exponentially over that period of time as population is exponential mm-hmm. and as technology is exponential. And people, you know, like it's like, okay, thinking back even bigger, why is human population exponential? It's exponential because we're able to innovate exponentially. You know, mm-hmm. we could not feed 8 billion people on the planet with stone age technology you, you you just can't do it you know that and and this is not to get too much down a rabbit hole this this is one of the problems with overpopulation theories and and mm-hmm. alarmism is that you know we're projecting future populations on top of current technology right and you're this not going to solve Malthusianism. the yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah and so that, that's that's one of the big disconnects there but anyway i, I was sitting there on, on the sea of galley i was just thinking about that and it, you know the thoughts percolate more over time and it just became obvious to me that, okay, we have less to come with the future than the past, you know. Right now, the year is 2023. I forget the year we first discovered, well, not discovered galaxies, but we identified what galaxies were. And it was mm. roughly 100 years ago, you know. So for 4,000 years, we didn't know what a galaxy was, that we were in a galaxy. You know, we had no idea mm-hmm. until 100 years ago. And now we have multiple pictures of black holes. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> you know, like our entire understanding of gravity with the um, special and general theories of relativity our understanding of galaxies, you know, our whole scientific knowledge has exploded in exponential form. And the majority of books that have been written have been written in the last hundred years. Uh, the majority of entertainment, obviously the entirety of movies, the, the majority of photographs, you know, when it comes to every way to measure human achievements or human progress or human innovation or human discovery, 
in every single way, there has been more change the last hundred years than the hundred years before that. Mm. And then, you know, back and back and back, everything's just that exponential function. And so that's pretty undeniable. <laughs> that, that's, yeah. that's pretty objective. Like it's really hard to argue that, you know, we have, you know, it's really hard to debate that, you know, if you have a man, let's say my age, 24 years old, and you're 19, 23, like what was their life? Well, they probably fought in World War I. They were probably in the trenches for a few months or a few years. Um, they did not have a tenth of the medicines I have access to now. They were not able to talk to Robert Breedlove on a computer instantaneously while we're in two different countries. It's like mm-hmm. the whole idea of having a, two people having a conversation in different countries never happened yeah. until now. And now I can be literally on Twitter and talk to people from 20 different countries a day. Yeah. But but whether it be a text or 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 video you know so the the 24 year old luke royals from 1923 has more in common technologically speaking with the person 2000 years before him at the time Mm. of jesus Hmm. you know i mean him he was in world war one was probably and probably every generation of men before him experienced some degree of combat or revolution or or, you know something like that Mm -hmm. and my generation you know lord really um, Mm. hopefully I never experienced combat, you know, that's no. like, you know, so to, no matter what lens you look at, the point I'm making is that in every way, life is completely different. I really appreciate you taking the time to engage with this Bitcoin content. I put in so much work into these educational services, put them out there for free, hopefully to get as many people interested in these messages as possible and having new perspectives when it comes to understanding Bitcoin. And this is because I think the first and foremost problem um, facing Bitcoin adoption is the need for education. And so hopefully this video has serviced that need for you. And secondly, it's the need for self-custody. Self-custodying your Bitcoin is extremely important and I highly encourage you to do it as soon as possible because as Bitcoin increases in adoption, increases in speed and increases in demand, not just from people, but from high net individuals, companies, corporations, and organizations. In all these cases, the demand for self-custody solutions is only going to exponentially increase. And so wherever you are in your Bitcoin journey, if you are buying Bitcoin, if you are trying to understand Bitcoin better, I highly encourage that after the education, you quickly get into that self-custody route. It's very intimidating for people. It's very hard for people to understand